between sixth and seventh grades, in a time before summers were overscheduled with music and soccer programs, I solicited the help of a neighborhood kid. And with parts salvaged from backyards, we designed and built a special kind of go-kart. Ours had a windsurfer sail. That summer, we spent sailing the streets of our small Utah town. Now, much, much later, I am still a designer that Seek solutions to big picture problems. I'm an artist. Unlike the stereotype of artists being bad at math, I like numbers and especially statistics. Lately, I've been using numbers to explore a complex problem at the intersection of art and economy. I've discovered a gap between the way public officials talk about supporting art and the way art advocates talk about it. Art people value art for its own sake. They value art because it is economy. I'm sorry, they value art because it is culture. Public officials, on the other hand, value art for its economy. They need to justify their support based on art's economic value. The National Endowment for the Arts makes a great case for the economic impact of arts organizations. I want to flip that script, however, and instead, I want to make a case for the economic impact of individual artists. Brooklyn, New York is a great example of the type of impact artists can have on a community. The Brooklyn I moved to in 1994 has completely transformed in the last 25 years, in large part because of artists. artists are being produced by the thousands in, by art schools in the area, and most of them want to live close to the economic center of the art universe, Manhattan. And most can't afford to live there, but they can afford to live in Brooklyn. As artists move to Brooklyn and as artists seek exposure for their art, they open art galleries. As artists seek social and cultural activity, they open bars, music venues, coffee shops. Artists create for themselves the kind of environment they want to live in. They create a critical mass of cultural and social activity. Now, what can we do to incentivize artists in other cities to achieve critical mass and to do what artists do, which is help communities grow economically in organic and culturally sensitive ways. Perhaps the way cities incentivize business holds a clue. For example, Amazon was recently offered billions of dollars in incentives as cities competed to be the destination for their new headquarters. What if we considered individual artists collectively, what would their collective impact be? And what is Amazon, after all, but a collective of individuals with unprecedented collective bargaining power? Research shows that artists produce economy and consequently tax revenues for local governments at a higher rate than the general population. This is because we artists tend to put our creative abilities to work filling gaps in community and culture. And we do that for the sake of community and culture, not dollars. I worked with a survey company to study a representative sample of artists living in Salt Lake County. Those artists provided three years of financial data, and with that information, I was able to put together an economic impact study similar to the ones used by big companies as they lobby local governments. I can show that 3,000 artists living in Salt Lake County have a combined economic impact of three quarters of a billion dollars a year. That's a big number. Let's simplify and consider one artist friend of mine named Kenny Riches. And Kenny was an art student at the University of Utah when he discovered that there wasn't a venue that showed his preferred style of art, contemporary art. So he dropped out of art school. And although he thought it may not be profitable, he opened KO Gallery in a just-developing downtown Salt Lake City. 
Nearby, he opened a frame shop that produced revenues to help support K.O. Gallery as well as his art practice. And through all of his endeavors, his art practice, the K.O. Gallery, as well as the frame shop, and probably other side hustles, Kenny made a modest $41,000 a year. But let's consider his total economic impact. The frame shop grossed $300,000 a year. Half went to cover overhead um, and materials for framing. The other half covered Kenny's wages and the wages of four employees, also artists. K.O. Gallery supported artists by pr producing 12 exhibitions a year. We know from the survey that the average Salt Lake County artist sells $10,000 a year in art, and half goes to galleries. They also spend $5,000 a year each buying materials for their art. That is a combined $205,000 in economic activity. But perhaps the most important impact that KO had was what it did for downtown Salt Lake City. According to Americans for the Arts, the average gallery visitor spends just over $31 on their outing. So the 15,000 annual visitors to KO Gallery spent a combined $472,000 every year in downtown Salt Lake City. Well, Kenny was barely making a living. His total economic impact came to nearly $1 million a year. And Kenny's amazing, but he's not alone. There are dozens of art galleries, frame shops, dance studios, music venues, coffee shops, and other businesses that are started and run by artists. Artists are true entrepreneurs because we are all about putting our creative energies to work, but we're often bad capitalists. Artists prefer to dedicate themselves to create community instead of turning a huge personal profit. That impulse leads us to create cultural content, consequently creating economy, often without compensation, without a real focus on personal gain. We see examples of this all over the world as artists transform the communities where they live. The growth tends to be organic, with in some cases some very smart and relatively hands-off incentives offered by local governments. But in each case, artists have a really concrete reason to move where they go. I mentioned Brooklyn. In Detroit, artists followed incentives by local government for nearly free housing. In Austin and in uh, Nashville, musicians have opportunities for what are potentially life-changing opportunities. What can we do to help artists achieve critical mass and transform our city? I propose that with a relatively modest investment, we can increase the economic art activity of artists in the Salt Lake Valley by nearly $1 billion every year. Now that's competitive with the impact of a large company for a fraction of the cost. It's paid for by an increase in tax revenues and it's got much more cultural value. One million dollars in annual direct to artists grants could accomplish that. With that type of program, Salt Lake could jump ahead of most cities in the world and become the most supportive location in this country. If 3,000 artists moved to Salt Lake County for those grants, the economic activity of artists in the Valley would double to reach 1.5 billion every year. As we champion the cultural and economic impact of individual artists, we transform our focus to support our best makers and our most creative entrepreneurs. Shifting that focus, we would also make Salt Lake one of the most important cultural centers in the country. We would be adding a vibrant and ingenious sale to our cultural and economic go-kart. Let's go sailing.